Hello everyone, my name is Michael and we're going to take a look at some ransomware. This video is actually going to be the first part of a series, uh, kind of a mini series for the ransomware stop or stop DJ Vu, um, actually a few other variants of it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started because there's quite a bit to talk about this one. Let's go ahead and as we normally would, I'm going to use Detected Easy, see what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a binary compiled with uh, C, either C or C++. Um, so we're going to have to actually disassemble it. Take a look at the entropy, just be curious. I'm saying it might not be packed, but there is kind of a really big dip um, going from really high entropy in this one little section here. So that, that might be interesting to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and toss it into IDA and see what we can look at. Now, we'll actually start getting some weird things going on here. Ida is going to complain about the exported number of functions is wrong, the exported address is weird, can't translate a virtual thing, honestly, hit yes until it works. <laughs> so it's going to start decompiling it here. Should be pretty quick. All right. Now, Let's take a look. It was complaining about the exports, and this this is actually pretty weird. Um, normally, for an executable, you'd only see like one or two exports if it's not a DLL. Um, that being the entry point, basically. So let's take a look at the imports. Alphabetical. Just cursory glance. There's not a lot of imports here, and I'm not seeing anything crypto related. There's no crypt. Uh, there's. Is there even there is write file. There's not a whole lot in here. Um, so I'm actually going to take a look at the strings. I'm going to hit Shift F12. And there's actually not a lot of strings in here. Um, that's kind of a red flag because normally you would see, you know, some, some more garbage. But maybe I'd be expecting to see hopefully something with the ransom note or uh, some, like, functions it's calling. Here's some functions that might be called dynamically or something um, it, just 172 strings is not very much um, so plot twist this is actually packed um, we can't really analyze it in this form so if we take a look through our functions here this sample actually uses a virtual protect method that's apparently very common with unpacked or with packed malware um, the virtual protect function if we take a look at the documentation here on Microsoft's website changes the protection of a region of committed pages blah, 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 blah. basically when you allocate some memory you can't it it can't be executed um, by default you have to actually mark it as being executable um, if you're like dynamically allocating memory so We'll see here that it has to be something allocated with virtual alloc or EX version. Um, but the weird thing is we're not seeing virtual alloc here. So that must mean it is dynamically called somehow. Even if we look in the strings here, not seeing it in the strings. So they have that kind of obfuscated somehow. So let's go ahead and take this into a debugger. I'm going to use x64 dbg. And let's go ahead and start to the entry point. I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint at virtual protect. And since we know in order to use virtual protect, you have to have memory allocated by virtual alloc. So let's do breakpoint at virtual alloc. All right. Let's go ahead and run. And all right, we hit virtual protect. Now, right now, we're inside the kernel 32 DLL. Uh, memory space. So we're going to go ahead and hit run to user code, get back to the malware. Um, we see they, they just called virtual protect. And if we look at, if we actually look back at that documentation here, let's take a look at the parameters. We have new protect. This is what you're wanting to set it to. Um, so it goes to these constants. Where we can see there's some uh, some flags we might want to look for to see you know read only write only execute these might be interesting to to spot 
um, wrong screen. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at that third argument here. We're gonna okay, we're gonna mark something as executable possibly. Uh, that being the hex 40 here, execute read write. Um, so there's actually not much interesting here. They can't be uh, if we like if we take a look at this first argument, which is what it's what it's doing this on. There's nothing really interesting here. So they haven't allocated anything yet. Let's go ahead and run again. And there we go. We hit a virtual alloc. All right. Let's go back to user land space. And we'll see. Okay. We just came from a dynamic call, this uh, pointer to virtual alloc. So they are doing some obfuscation here. Um, and the virtual alloc function will actually return a block of memory. So let's look at EAX, and we'll see we have a big old chunk of uh, zeroed memory. Okay. Now, one technique that you'd normally do is you can like select some of this memory and break on write. So the hardware will actually set a breakpoint, and if anything writes to this space, we're we're assuming they have to write something to it. They're not going to execute null bytes. It's going to break. <laughs> Um, so you could do that, or I'm going to actually kind of take a different approach because they're going to, since they're going to allocate something here, I'm going to assume they're going to put executable code here and they need to run virtual protect again in order to tell it that it can be executed. Um, otherwise you're going to get into like stuck in a loop if it's like decrypting something to pack in here and it, it might be a little more messy. So let's go ahead and just run it again. And yep, we hit virtual protect again. And there we go. We have a MZ and this looks like a PE file. So um, handily, this is actually already in a page, like a, this is a page of memory. So let's go ahead and binary, uh, let's actually select it all. here and we'll go to memory save to file let's go ahead and just plop it on the desktop dump all right and that's honestly all there is to that if we actually take a look at this dump let's just make sure it, it that we dumped it correctly and it uh, it is showing that it is an executable um, our entropy kind of changed a bit here once again it says not packed um, but let's let's just verify that. Uh, let's go ahead and close. I don't care to save that. Let's go ahead and take a look at IDA with this. All right, it's going to see it as a portable executable, and this is actually a good sign. Uh, there was actually a PDB um, attached or defined for this executable, and we see this is the user path that that was at. Looks like they call it Encrypt Win API. That's a good indicator. Maybe they're going to use the Windows API. Um, so we don't have this symbol, but this is a good sign um, just from my experience with this ransomware that we unpacked it correctly. We're going to say no, we don't have that PDB, so we can't link to it. And let's let it go through. I'm going to break it down. And while that's going, let's take a look at the imports. We actually do have, uh, there we go. Uh, crypt functions, create hash, destroy hash, hash data. So I don't see crypt encrypt or anything, but they are going to possibly create some hashes with the Windows API. We have create thread. So we've got all kinds of good stuff here. Um, so this looks a little more workable. If we take a look at our strings, a lot of garbage, but this is a lot more strings, 588. So I would say we successfully decrypt or unpacked this. Uh, we have some interesting lines here for looking for JSON. We have some GUI strings, I guess. Um, a lot more stuff that we'll talk about in future videos. Um, so that was kind of the long way of getting that packed or unpacked. There is actually a script to do this all for us here. Now, I really apologize. I do not remember who gave me this script or where, who wrote it or where it came from. But we'll, if we take a look at this Python code, virtual protect, 
they're they're basically hooking into a debugger. There's a library for the Windows app debugger. And in Python, you can actually do exactly what we just did. Uh, get the process, find the virtual protect, and dump it to file. So that's actually really neat. Let's go ahead and do that. Open the command line. Python dump pi. And successfully dumped. I'm going to go ahead and kill it right now. Actually, no. Uh, looks like it's going to run itself again. Let's just go ahead and uh, this is something to also keep in mind with this ransomware. It actually, on the first run, doesn't encrypt. We actually see it's going to run itself again with a admin is not auto start, is not task. So I wonder if they're going to later try to set it up as a task and as an auto start. So that's kind of interesting. They they escalated the, the privilege here to prompt for an admin. Um, we're going to say, yeah, sure, go ahead and run. And if we take a look, we have our dump here. Take a look in Detect It Easy. Yep. So this is going to be very, very similar to the dump that we had. So nice little tidbit. I'll share that script because it's actually really handy. Saves quite a bit of time. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, just finish this off by seeing, kind of watching what the malware does. Um, you'll actually notice I have my network axed. Um, I disconnected the network from my virtual box instance, and that's because it actually does talk to a server. Um, that's going to be a whole subject of a of a, another video, but uh, we don't need it to try to reach out to the server. This sample actually, their server's down, and it's going to like sit there forever trying to talk to it. Um, so just to speed up things, um, so we can see it's not doing too much here, except for we do have a ransom note dropped, okay, with this personal ID, and let's take a look at some files, oh, they actually are encrypted, so um, I am curious where it said that, well, we'll see it's not encrypted everything yet, it hasn't reached my desktop yet. It had those flags that said like task is not task is not auto run. If we take a look at the uh, task scheduler, the start menu would work. Task scheduler, thank you. Apparently, is this thing pegging? No. Okay, we just have to wait for the task manager to come up or scheduled tasks to come up because that's actually one of the dangerous things with this particular ransomware there are some other ransomware that do this um, this one as I am trying to illustrate here come on trying to demonstrate the ta the uh, this malware actually sets itself to schedule every five minutes it'll rerun itself so that's extremely dangerous when uh, you're connecting new devices you don't know it's in that this machine's infected or you haven't properly disinfected it yet oh my Explorer crashed here we go <laughs> Apparently the malware is really messing up my virtual box here. Uh, let's see if it'll show me that library here. Come on. Oh no, it did not set the task in the sample. This might actually be an older sample before they did that, or it hasn't set it yet. I'm actually confused why it's not shown here, but it would show a scheduled task of time trigger task that we'll mess with later, um, showing that it sets to run literally every five minutes. Um, so that's why it's very important to disconnect the system properly before you go trying to decrypt or recover or anything. So that was just a quick, um, quick little analysis as my virtual machine dies from this thing. My goodness. Um, so this was kind of a get started on a mini series for stop ransomware. Um, in future episodes, we'll go over the encryption, it talking to a server. Um, how to break it, 
all kinds of fun stuff. So tune in the future for those videos, and thank you for watching.